is Jeffrey Pan. This is my studio where we uh, create uh, mainly my sculptural work, but also a lot of like installations and, uh, and custom things too. Well, it really started out as just a hobby. You know, I went uh, after work and on weekends to a glass blowing studio, and then uh, you know, in order to pursue it further, I had to take it a lot more seriously. And that's uh, when I went to study in Italy for a while, and then just kind of came back here and set up shop. And, see how long it would last uh, when it was this time for 20 years. Well, the main challenge as an artist uh, these days is to uh, run a business and operate this factory, you know, that I need to, uh, to execute all the work, you know, the, uh, the equipment and the, uh, you know, the science and the engineering that goes into creating all these pieces is uh, definitely a challenge, but it definitely feeds the other side of my brain as well. Well, my practice, uh, you know, ironically, my practice as an artist has kind of returned to where I was when I first began. You know, in the beginning, when you're learning, you're not concerned about making uh, multiple things or, you know, terribly concerned with the actual craft. But through the course of the, uh, through the course of learning the craft, you know, you go through that process and hone your skills and do sorts of different things. But now, you know, 20 years on, I've returned to just making one-of-a-kind work with no real pressure on it. You know, I'm fortunate that I get to make really, you know, just exactly what I want. Well, glass blowing differentiates itself from other art forms in, in several ways. Mainly, you can't touch it. You know, you can't actually have your hands on it. Um, uh, that being, and, uh, you know, that being said, it's expressive in another sort of way. You know, like jazz. You know, there's a framework or a set of rules that you're improvising and working in. And almost the more constricted you are, the more free you are. You know, the other main challenge is just uh, operating these factories, you know. Uh, you know, I look for synergy everywhere in my work, you know, we try to use every little scrap, you know, uh, uh, from the leftover parts and making the larger sculptural pieces to jewelry and uh, decorative things and uh, all sorts of stuff like that. This, uh, the challenges and going along with the challenges and responsibilities of operating a place like this. You know, I've, uh, over the years, uh, you know, the efficiency of the process is something that's very important to me. You know, currently, the way that we work now, uh, our carbon footprint is smaller than a paper shop. Well, the main thing, the main difficulty is, you know, that people find when they begin glass blowing is that it's, there's nothing to draw on. It's not like anything else you've ever done before in your life. Um, it's very insular, you know, in the beginning you don't get to touch things, the, the feedback from the material is extremely subtle, um, but, uh, you know, all those difficulties are what make it uh, even more rewarding. You know, one of the, some of the most uh, interesting and meaningful projects um, that draw, like, a very interesting response from people are, are the things that, that mean more to people than just, you know, a decorative item. You know, making a special commission for someone's birthday, or creating an urn to be buried in the earth with someone. You know, those type of things, uh, you know, are very meaningful. You know, it's something that I struggle with in my work. You know, what real difference do, does what I do make in the world? But, you know, being able to share it with people and actually uh, have it be meaningful is, uh, is important. It's something to look for. What inspires me most in my work is, is really creating a space. You know, a space inside the piece using the transparency of both sides. So really my work, uh, you know, for the most part, doesn't make uh, very many statements other than about itself. Sometimes it's difficult to find things that you actually enjoy about the art world itself. Uh, you know, history will tell you it's, uh, you know, it's completely subjective and, uh, it's not a meritocracy. It's just a uh, it's just an interesting way to uh, to live your life. Really, now, you know, being a glass artist, you know, one of my main concerns is is commercial, keeping this uh, the operation going and viable. So um, I kind of feel like I exist outside of the so-called art world in the in the real world. Absolutely, you know, the preparations uh, for new work. Uh, can start sometimes a year in advance. Uh, there's a lot of process engineering that goes into creating the, uh, you know, the delicate balance of pattern and color that goes into my work. Uh, most of the work that is involved in a piece is, 
before any of the glass blowing even starts. You know, creating the patterns, laying them out, you know, cutting and polishing everything. You know, there's a tremendous amount of, uh, of setup and planning before a piece starts. Now, that being said, once the glass blowing process begins, you know, then there's a uh, really interpretive part of the process. So, you know, ahead of time, the most creative part of the process really is the design. But once I start with the glass blowing, you know, that's all out the window and I'm really just interpreting what I have. <laughs> as far as dream projects go, I think I have about 40. Uh, but, uh, you know, this year, we're here in the winter, normally we're off in Florida doing shows, but I'm here to, uh, to push the envelope and raise the game a little bit. We're going to be working on some large-scale installation pieces, you know, you can enter and actually walk through and experience the space created by the glass from the inside, and that's really exciting for me. I get a lot of questions about, uh, you know, young people who want to pursue a career in the arts, and, uh, you know, it's really a, a, a delicate balance of, of training and allowing your creativity to flourish. You know, I really, uh, truly believe that the best way to learn uh, to be an artist is to first learn to be a craftsman, you know, and that's the way that I teach the glass blowing here uh, with my apprentices is as a trade. Uh, the creativity is always inside of you and that comes from, uh, you know, that just comes from your, it's developed through your experiences with the material.